What's up guys, JDog back here again and we are back with another tutorial. Now I've noticed there's been a lot of interest for my uh, cross-compatible videos uh, with Java and Bedrock, so I thought we'd go one step further here. Um, and of course, as you can see in the title, um, adding plugins to Bedrock. Now let me just explain first, so you don't think this is some sort of clickbait, and as I will display on the screen as well, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using a Java server. We're going to be making it cross-compatible, so a Bedrock player can go on there, um, and then we're going to be installing the plugins. However, the reason I say that you can install plugins on the Bedrock is because we're just going to be using the Java one as a shell. We don't need a Java account in any way. All we need is our Bedrock account to be able to make a server and then to be able to connect a server. Of course, uh, before we get started, um, Windows 10 connects straight to servers, mobiles connect straight to servers. If you've got a PlayStation or an Xbox, um, there are other tutorials and you can just use an app and that will also let you connect to servers. Therefore, meaning that you can connect with pretty much any device, you can OP yourself and then you can use pretty much most of the plugins that Java use. Obviously, some aren't going to work, some aren't cross compatible, but I have have been testing them and a lot of the major ones do work. So for the sake of the video here we're going to be adding in a uh, grief protection so let's say you've started your um, your server you've got all your bedrocks clients coming on and now they can add grief protection so they can protect all of their land just like you would in a Java server however it's for bedrock um, you again I just want to stress you don't need a Java account at all for this and this is why I said adding plugins to a bedrock server a bedrock server but either way it'll work just the same. So let's get into this, and obviously you are going to need a Bedrock server. If you haven't yet already, head over to Seekerhost, you can grab yourself a server, Eden, Bedrock or Java, whatever you prefer. Obviously for this one, we're going to be using a Java one, but I'm going to be starting from default, so um, you know, as soon as you purchase your server, that's where I'll be starting from, so we can get going from there. Now before I get started with the video, don't forget to hit that like button, and subscribe if you haven't already. It really does help out the channel. And of course, if you want any extra help, head over to jdogofficial.com. We've got help desk there. You can create a ticket. Um, we can have a chat. I can always help you through with anything Minecraft related. And of course, our Discord, if not. So what we're going to need um, to do this. So obviously, like we said, we need a Minecraft server. Another program that I found um, extremely useful, and you might also, is FileZilla. This is because it's just an easier way of um, uploading plugins and stuff from your server. You can basically connect to your server and then change any file, delete any file. It's much easier than doing it through the FTP file access, but you can also do it through the FTP file access. I will be leaving the link for FileZilla um, in the description because I will be using this because Geyser and Floodgate uh, to make this cross compatible first um, are quite big files and it's much easier to transfer through uh, FileZilla. So we're going to need the Minecraft server, we're going to need FileZilla, we're going to need um, Floodgate and Geyser plugins, and then also the Grief Protection plugin which we're going to be adding afterwards. So first things first, and you can skip this bit if you have already used uh, my last video, and you've made this cross compatible server. I'm going to be doing this for the latest version, which of currently is on Java uh, 117.1, but it's also for the current version of Bedrock. Of course, when you do install this, just make sure that you're just installing the current Geyser or Floodgate plugin, and it will all go nicely. So, um, we've got our server. First thing that we do before we do anything is we're going to stop our server. This is because uh, we don't want to transfer any files. Um, whilst it's still on, it might corrupt them or break the server in some way. As you can see, we've now stopped the server. Next thing that we're going to do is we're going to come down to uh, server jar. You're going to start as default. If you have got this on Java or Paper um, or anything like that that supports plugins already, uh, absolutely fine, keep it as that. Um, if it's default or bedrock, after we stop the server, we're going to want to delete the old files just to make sure that we start from a clean. Of course, you can also do this by going to Files, Setup. You can then select Delete All Server Files and then Clean Mods Directories and Plugins. Um, however, I like to do it the, uh, the manual way of just deleting all your files yourself. Again, you can do this by going from Files, you can go to FTP File Access. Once you're logged in, simply select all and then head to delete. Um, after you've done that, just hit submit. Now, one thing I will say is the FTP file access on Multicraft can only handle a certain amount of files going through. As you can see, that did. However, if you've got a really big server with loads of files, um, you're going to do a few things. You might want to back it up. So if you do, just make sure to save your uh, world files or any other backups. You can make a backup and just save that. Or if it is quite large and you're not able to do this um, and it puts you onto a page where it says it's timed out, that's where you're going to need to use FileZilla. To use FileZilla to delete the files, you're going to simply want to connect to your uh, server. You the host username, password, and port. You're going to be able to find this information on your uh, Multicraft. 
If you go onto FTP file access, the FTP file access address is the host. Um, the port goes in the port section right there. Uh, you've got your username, which will go in your username section, of course, and then your multicraft password, which is your normal multicraft password. That'll be uh, going there. Once you hit quick connect, you can then use this right arrow here to then connect to servers that you have already connected to. So I'm just gonna connect to another server, which I've been using for tests and stuff like that. So obviously I've deleted all my files and all you would do once you're connected is just highlight these and hit delete. It'll then delete all your files and you have nothing on your server to start a nice fresh server with. However, where I've already done that, I can now go ahead and select my server jar. So for this, what I recommend, and um, if you do have the latest paper, I recommend paper, if not spigot. The reason I say paper is because it supports both spigot and bucket plugins. This means it will not only support Geyser and Floodgate to make it cross compatible really well, um, but it will also support a variety of other plugins because you can now use two different um, versions of plugins, which is spigot or bucket, rather than just one or the other. So let's just go down and we're gonna do the latest paper one, which as of now is 117.1 once you've done that just make sure to save it does usually automatically save but i would always recommend saving it either way once it has saved you're going to want to start up your server now that you're starting it back up it will basically kick in and it will create all of the files for paper 117.1 and then we can go ahead to make it cross compatible once we've made it cross compatible we can then start adding in the plugins and join in on our bedrock account now again like i said earlier if you do want to skip this particular part because you've already done this part um i'll leave some timestamps so you can just skip ahead to when we can start adding the plugins. Whilst it is doing that, let's just actually go ahead and download the plugins that we're going to need. To do this, just head over to Geyser MC. Of course, the links again will be in the description, and we're going to be downloading the latest Geyser and the latest Floodgates. This will support the latest version of Minecraft that's out. These guys are really good. Join their Discord as well. They have lots of updates and information, so it's always good to keep up with that. And they do um, they do update really regularly to fix any bugs. So from this page, we're going to go ahead to download. On the downloads page here, we're going to go for the Geyser Spigot Jar, and of course this will work because we're running a paper server, so let's just go ahead and click that and we're going to start downloading the file. If it does come up and ask you whether you want to keep it or not, yes, we do want to keep it. These are safe files. I've downloaded loads of them. Um, another note here is this is the build history. This is when they've released the newest one. You can see they actually update it almost daily, if not every few days. And as you can see here, we got it blocked because it could harm your device. Let's just go ahead and keep that because we want to keep it. It is safe. Don't worry about it. Geyser is fairly reputable. Right now, next up to find the floodgate, we're going to come to Geyser MC. We're going to go down to Floodgate, and um, we're then going to find Master. This is important, so this is exactly how you find it. It's a bit funny to find it otherwise. Um, and then we're also going to find the floodgate uh, spigot jar right here. So let's click that and let's download that too. Of course, if it asks us, uh, we're going to keep this one too. These are the main two that we're going to need to make a cross compatible server. So let's just go ahead and keep right there. And now we have our two plugins. If we head back to our Multicraft, we can now just go ahead and stop the server again because it would have created all the files that we need the plugin files so we can now go ahead and upload this great all stopped and um, so a couple of ways to upload plugins I did find it a bit hard using the FTP file access myself now as I said earlier I would recommend using FileZilla for this because the guys are plugin especially is quite a big plugin it might either take a while or time out using the FTP file access for your files so I'm just going to go ahead and log in with FileZilla if we just go and maximize this now you can see that it's created all of these files here these have all been created um, with a 1.17.1 jar that we selected and we can now go ahead and um, find the plugins on the left hand side which is our PC side. Another thing I would suggest is just finding your um, your two files that you downloaded, the two jar files of Floodgate and uh, Geyser and just adding them somewhere else. I'm just going to put them on the desktop for now uh, just for ease of use and um, then also you find it easier to find on uh, FileZilla. So now using the left hand side to search for your PC um, folders and documents, we can now see that we have Geyser Spigot there or wherever you've put it. And we've also got Floodgate right here. What we're gonna do on the right hand side is we're gonna double click on plugins. This will open up our plugins directory on our server and we're gonna drag and drop Geyser first. So let's just drag and drop Geyser. Of course, mine has a brackets five because I've downloaded this a few times. Um, for a few different videos and as you can see it's going to take a little while this one because it is quite a big plugin of course with the new 117 uh, update it has had to get a bit bigger to support everything um, but it still works really well so let's just go ahead and download that and the next one is we're going to download floodgate spigot once it has downloaded great that's all uploaded so let's just go ahead and do the same for floodgate drag it right over and once it's done it will say transfer finished with that all done we can now go ahead and close filezilla we don't need it right now and we're going to go start our server again i know this is a lot 
got to start starting and stopping but what we need to do is open the files um, change the files stop it and then so on like that so now once this does start up we are going to be going to the config files changing a few bits in the settings to make sure that it works and our bedrock clients can connect again not needing to use a Java account at all you can just be a bedrock user to do this um, and I won't be using a Java account at any point during this video with the server started again let's just go ahead and stop one more time this is because we're going to be changing some of the configuration files like I just said and with that let's go to files and we're going to go to config files now what we're going to be looking for here is the geyser um, geyser spigot config yml right here so let's just go ahead and click on that and here is going to be when you're going to be able to edit it and make sure that it's pointing towards your server nifty trick here is just to open up another page with your server information so you're going to need your IP import and you're going to need to um, copy and paste it onto the config files so let's just go back to the config files um, and let's get started from the top first thing we're going to need to do is change this bit here which is the port we want to change it to the port of our server so let's just double click this let's copy it of course if it is the same port you don't need to change it over and let's just go ahead and paste making sure that there still is a space between the brackets and there next things next is uh, is actually optional here is this is the message that you want it to display uh, for bedrock clients if you do want to at the moment it'll say guys or another guys a plugin you can of course change this just make sure to keep it within the quotation marks so I can put jdog um, and then I'll put another jdog server there you go like that and that's the message that the bedrock clients will see now let's just scroll down a little bit further right here and we're going to be looking for this part right here um, if it is auto <laughs> right here I sound very British then um, if it I am British of course if it is uh, set on auto standalone version blah, blah blah we want to set this auto right here to be our actual IP address to the server so let's just go back to multicraft let's copy that over come back over here and we're going to paste it where it says auto again making sure to leave a space between the brackets and the first number and no spaces after the last number again we want to just go ahead and change the port under this so a few lines under that they've got another port number which we want to change back to ours again so just go ahead copy that we're going to come back over and paste over exactly again following the rules of one space after the brackets and no space after um, the last number last but not least we have the authentication type this is important this needs to be authenticated through floodgates so people don't have to sign in with any other accounts they can just connect with bedrocks so let's just double click online and we're going to type in floodgate exactly like that again following the same rules of no uh, one space between the brackets and that and then no spaces afterwards so let's just have a quick look over and i'm pretty sure that is everything done on here we can just go ahead and save now um, and then we're going to be going back to our server main dashboard and we're going to start it back up this will now kick in so bedrock clients are able to join on so with our server started up now let's just minimize this and let's open up a bedrock minecraft i do apologize if the images are a bit laggy i usually use a different recorder for this but i just wanted to stay on the same one um, so we can just go back and forth between that and the multi-craft um, so yeah the images in the middle might be a little bit slow so let's just go ahead to play let's go to servers I might already have this on there Oh, I actually do already um, if you don't let's just go ahead to add servers you can call it whatever you want so you can just put jdog or whatever uh, name your server is we're then going to be using the uh, IP right here so you're going to put the IP copy that over you're going to paste that right in the server address and then you're going to get your port which is right here and you're going to paste that into the port right there once you've done that just go ahead click save and you can see that we are online so let's just go ahead and join on make sure that we are able to join with our bedrock account again I do apologize about the buggy screen usually this particular screen recorder is a little bit slower but you get to see me so you know pros and cons so as with any guys or unfortunately when you do start off you start off falling from the sky that's just sort of as it's reading everything and it's translating it from Java to bedrock one other thing to note is that your username will have a dot in front of it if you're a bedrock user now that lag will last for about say about 20 seconds once that's done you're in and as you can tell I'm on a Java server right now that's all it took and we're now running a, a Java server but basically as a bedrock one using only bedrock clients now I just want to add at this exact point in time geyser has having to is having to go through a lot of updates it's gone through the 117 which is huge to then other updates to up to 118 so um, if you do experience some bugginess unfortunately that's just because they're having to update constantly to fix it so just make sure that you keep your jar updated the more ones they bring out the less buggy it gets but anyway first part over and we are on a Java server so now let's just exit out of Minecraft and let's go ahead to actually adding plugins now so now you've got your server um, you can connect with the bedrock all your bedrock players can now connect to it using the same IP and port of course if you're using Seekerhost just come down you can create yourself a custom domain so now they can join on with jdog.seekerhostservice.com 
and of course with the port because you're going to need that for bedrock now let's stop this one more time and let's go ahead and find the grief prevention plugin or um, any plugin that you want to try with we're just going to try with this one first so you can do land claiming as with everything um, I'll leave a link in the description for this particular one I do find it to be one of the best uh, land claiming or land uh, non griefing plugins it really is good I know it says native to 116 but I've tested it and it does work for 117 still let's just go ahead and click download via external site um, and we're just going to go and download the plugin first and we're just going to go ahead and click the download button right there as you can see same thing it's tried to block it for safety but it is safe I've used this uh, for quite a while now so let's just go ahead and keep it and download it with our server stopped um, we can now use the FTP file access because this will go through the FTP file access and also you get to see both ways of uploading plugins so go ahead to uh, FTP file access once you've logged in using your information just head over to plugins um, and then we're going to go to upload let's go ahead and choose file um, now if we go over to our downloads you're going to see that we have a grief protection that we just downloaded so let's just double click that let's hit submit and it will now upload our plugin again i can't stress how important it is to stop your server before you do stuff like this so with that all done we can just go ahead back to survival and we can start our server now that's all it's took to add a plugin so as a bedrock player you might not be too aware with plugins because we don't generally have to use them it's usually add-ons um, but this is now how you can start adding plugins obviously i'll make another few videos adding different plugins as well but primarily that's all you need to do Obviously, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Um, some you're going to have to try and test to see whether they work with the geyser and floodgate and whether they get translated over. With our server started back up again and our plugin working, and you can also check this by going over to your console um, and you can just type in plugins, press enter, and it will tell you what plugins you currently have running. So we have floodgate, geyser spigot, and grief protection. So let's minimize this and open Minecraft again. Now at this point, I am going to switch camera. So uh, I'm going to be off the screen now just so we can get a better representation of how to use the plugin. So let's see you in game. So let's just go ahead and OP ourselves on the console first because we are going to need to do that to do the cheats. Let's just do dot jdog 131 131 and then press enter and it will now make us a server operator. So let's just come back off that, minimize that, maximize that. Um, as you can see on screen, we're now a service operator. Let's do a forward slash and we'll do a game mode creative. Also, another fun thing, if you've never used Spectator, you now can. In a way, anyway, it's, it's, it's still a little bit still a little bit buggy, but you can use it in effect. Anyway, let's come out of that. That is extremely buggy. And let's just change over to game mode creative. Let's get ourselves out of this tree right here. So we're now creative. Let's just change it um, to day. So time set day beautiful so as you can see we can now operate um, all the commands as we would on a bedrock server but we're on um, Java so let's just go ahead and what you're gonna need is you're gonna need a golden shovel for this this is gonna be how you can claim your land let's just go over here let's say you want to claim this piece of land here now you can do this in two ways also you can do this with a chest if we grab ourselves a chest um, didn't mean to grab 64 so if we grab ourselves a chest put that down as you can see it's automatically um, put some land down for us we now own this land here now nobody apart from us unless you do a forward slash trust and the player name is going to be able to do anything that they shouldn't be doing in here and I really do mean anything they can't blow it up they can't open chests they can't move item frames they can't talk to villagers they can't kill villagers they can't step on our crops and it gets better than that so let's just get our um, our spade let's say we want to make it a bit bigger we click it on that corner we can click it there and then it'll open up um, the same as if we want to just make our own claims so let's just come down on here and to unclaim it we do forward slash unclaim so we've now unclaimed this if so if you do want to give yourself some blocks just to test do a forward slash acb your player name with the dot at the start and then how many blocks you want to give press enter and as you can see i've now been given 100 blocks so now for example if you want to do uh, one that isn't with a chest you can right hand click somewhere you can right hand click and then go to another corner um, click and you can see I've made my custom one of course this is also how you can grow it so let's say um, you do get more claim and the way that you do that is by playing more online so the longer you play online on the server the more claim blocks you're gonna get you can just come up to the corner click it and then open, make it bigger now you really don't need many more commands for this it's very self-explanatory you uh, mark your land you protect your land Obviously use the ACD to give yourself more blocks and another important one is for your spawn. Do a forward slash admin claims, press enter. Now this will only be for admins. So let's say I just have a spawn or an admin area. I can do a right hand click there 
Um, and I can do a right hand click over here and this is the admin spawn area. You can still trust friends uh, but this is just for admin and this has an unlimited amount of blocks so you can use this for spawn areas and stuff like that where you don't want players actually building on it or claiming the land. Obviously if I just come off of that now and I try and build one going across there as a normal player if I do that um, and then that's going to say you can't create a claim here because it would overlap your existing claim or another player's claim. So guys, that's pretty exciting stuff. You can now get on, make yourself a Bedrock server and add loads of cool plugins that Java has and Bedrock hasn't got. It is very exciting. Another exciting thing is that this server I am going to make public so you can actually come along and join on as well. I'll leave the link in the description and I'll leave this up. I'm going to keep it up to date with new Java uh, plugins and yeah, let's see if we can get some uh, some fellows on here. So thanks for watching guys and we'll catch you on the next one. Bye-bye.